Hello everybody, and welcome to a Wikifunctions tutorial workshop. So, uh, I'm James Forrester, I'm the uh, tech lead and principal software engineer on the Abstract Wikipedia team at the Foundation, and I'm joined on stage soon by Nicola and Stoat. <laughs> oh. Who's, who's a very active community member on Wikifunctions and is helping us um, build uh, uh, the first new Wikimedia project for 10 years. And so we've got a lot of ambition, a lot of dreams. Uh, sure. A, a lot of ambitions, a lot of dreams that we want uh, to make real. And uh, there's a whole talk about the state of Wikifunctions, where we have gone in the last year since the last Wikimania, where we're going next. That's um, not today, that's in two days' time. But this is more of a workshop to show how to use wiki functions right now. And um, hopefully some of you will have laptops out. and You'll be able to kind of go along with us as we do this and try it out for yourselves. Um, does that sound right? Yeah. So I'm um, unusually, rather than slides, we're actually live demoing the website. So this will probably crash just randomly because live demos with technology is always a bad idea. Yeah, that'd be great if we could um, bring more people in. I'm conscious that, you know, you don't want too many close together. It'd be too warm, but it's great to see lots of people here. Happy to wait a little bit. Although, of course, stealing chairs from other rooms that also have lots of people interested in them is not going to work out so well. So <laughs> ho hopefully we can come to some satisfactory agreement. Um, so I will fill for time in the time-honoured way um, and just talk very briefly about what you're seeing in front of you. So this is the front page for Wikifunctions. Uh, the red barrier around the outside of the page is because we're logged in with my staff account, which can do lots of scary things in production. And so I have it set so that it shows this big red alert to me so I don't do something like delete the concept of stewards or block <laughs> users or say actually the foundation believes in whatever you know that's not a good thing to do from your staff account so we don't want that to happen and so that's why it's there so please ignore the red dirt um so this is the front page we have a fun little video about how to use wiki functions and what it is but the really exciting stuff is that uh you can click here and you can click run a function and you end up on a very mysterious page that just says, try a function, and doesn't say anything more. Uh, there's a box, and you have to fill it in. So let's do add. Add two natural numbers, OK? I want to add two and two. And I'm going to click this button here, and it's going to go away and think about it for a little bit. And it's going to give me the result four, which is very good, because if it gave me a different result, I'd be quite sad. Um, but it is possible to uh, break technology all the time. So if I click here on details, this will tell me a bunch of information about what just happened. So this ran an implementation using JavaScript. It uh, took 1.7 seconds, which is not ideal, of which 200 milliseconds was actually CPU time. And I can pull up really boring details like the um, server uh, names. And on the back end, we're running in QuickJS. So I'd be like, oh, OK, so this is interesting. I can add two numbers together. What more can I do? Well, right now, there's a lot you can do, but it's still very limited. We're in a process of building out wiki functions, um, and that is not for us at the foundation to decide what wiki functions can and can't do. We're providing the platform, but it's for the wiki functions community and the wider Wikimedia community to make those decisions. So we're supporting that, and a big piece of work we're doing right now is on uh, pulling data from Wikidata and pushing wiki functions results out to Wikipedias, and that's the kind of big things we're working on this year uh, at the foundation. But the wiki functions community makes decisions, right? So if I go to add two numbers, this will be ugly. Uh, here we go. So everything, I, I'm going to fix the interface a little bit here uh, and switch into basic English. Right, so it's no, no longer warning me that all the page was in basic English and not British English. Um, so now we're back into uh, nice things. So you can see here, 
along the top, it says add two natural numbers and then a ZID. So like Wikidata, everything on Wiki functions is meant to be multilingual. Nothing, no language is special. There's no like everything's in English and then translated from English to the language you want to speak. Everything is in all languages equally, hopefully. Um, and so you can see here, this, this uh, function is actually in nine languages. So it has a little about box about a little aliases. You can see there's actually even more aliases that you can see there. And I can pull up the function names in, say, French. Addition um, has a short description and so on and so forth. And I can change the whole interface over to a different language. And then if there are not bugs, stay in that language. So you can turn up on Wiki functions speaking Polish the interface is in Polish, you use it in Polish, and you leave, and you never felt like you were using a site that wasn't Polish, it, because that's, you know, multilingual. We're meant to be everything for all languages. We are not perfect. <laughs> we are very much not perfect. There's a lot to do there still, but um, that's the kind of direction we're going. And then what this does is it says this is a function. Um, so you saw this box before. Um, it says it has uh, two inputs, a natural number and another natural number, and it outputs a natural number. So natural number is a type we have on wiki functions, which is a number that is one, two, three, four, so integers, but positive integers plus zero. So not negative integers. We actually have um, negative integers as well, or integers supported uh, later. And then we have these two boxes here. So the top box is implementations, and the second box is tests. So the second box is a bunch of test cases for us to know, is this code doing what we as a community want it to do? And so people can propose test cases, and that can be a community discussion, and then you agree, yep, this is a test case, we agree. No, that's not a test case. So, for example, if you say that 2 plus 2 is 5, hopefully <laughs> the code will say, I gave a different value. And the community can say, actually, no, we don't want 2 plus 2 to equal 5, we want it to equal 4. So you can see here, there are five test cases that have been added. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 1 plus 0 is 1, and then it gets more interesting. So here, if I click through, this is a, this is a wiki page that someone has created, and someone has created a very large number, uh, which is a lot of nines, and they've added one to it, and you'll see that you get that full number, um, you know, the 10 trillion or whatever it is. The thing that's interesting about this particular use case is that very commonly in computers, when we say a number, Computers are like, yeah, 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 a number, but there's a limit to what the computer considers a number. So it might be 2 to the 32, 2 to the 64, 32-bit, 64-bit computers. Um, we defined as a community that we did not want users to have to worry about that kind of concern. That needs to be dealt with by the platform. And so natural numbers are defined to go up theoretically to infinity. In practice, I mean, you'll run out of pixels and so on and so forth quite soon as the... I guess this is air conditioning and not an air raid. Um, anyway, it's happening. But so this, these numbers are much bigger than a regular addition would happen in JavaScript or Python. You ha we have to do special stuff on the back end. And then we can click through to natural number itself. This is where it gets very technical. Um, and this is where we define the type of a natural number. And we say, uh, so this is also translatable. So here it's got a value in Polish. Um, and it has functions related to it, equality and validations. And it also has these things which magically convert um, from, from objects on wiki functions to code. And you'll see here, if you happen to know JavaScript, that this is converting the number to a big int, which is um, the kind of uh, JavaScript built-in feature that supports very big numbers. And that's why we need it. Um, whereas if I go back to the Python one, that is instead using... Um, uh, Python's int system, which supports very large numbers out of the box. And so, as a user, you're not meant to care whether it's running in J JavaScript or Python or Lua or any system on the back end. It is meant to take care of all those technical details for you, because you are not meant to need to be a technical expert to use the system. So, we have, if we go to the front page, we have a bunch of um, catalog of available functions. Now, a catalog of functions, as you might think, like a catalog of articles, catalog of data items, wiki data, it's always going to be <laughs> a small set, but um, not small enough to load quickly. Uh, so, so you can see here, people have written a bunch of functions. Some of them are built-in functions that we created um, in the team just to help people write things, and other people have written a lot more. Um, so if I scroll down to 
So there are some really interesting things here about string comparison, which is really useful when doing a bunch of natural language stuff. And then if I get further down, adding string suffixes if not already present. So testing plus ing goes to testing, but um, not if ing was already there. Anyway, complex functions people have written. And then we get all the way down, un let's say we get uncommon string operations. So this is the Fuiki functions community not thinking these are going to be used all the time. Uh, cryptographic hashes, all that stuff, lots of fun. And finally, we get to this great big section here, natural language operations. So this is one of the really big areas of interest for us for Wiki functions. We want to, to take all of the power that uh, especially the big technical communities like the English Wikipedia and the German Wikipedia have, and provide those tools or the platform for those tools to all the wikis, small wikis of different languages, non-Wikipedias, like sometimes Wikipedia in Serbian has something, but uh, Wikipedia, sorry, Wiki Voyage in Serbian doesn't, that kind of problem. And also um, uh, translate uh, things from one language to another using eventually Wikidata Lexeme data. So um, you can pull up uh, this, like, is this, is this a word that has only uh, Bangla, Bengali characters? And you see here it's got an implementation in Python and a different one in Python using um, Unicode ranges and then one in JavaScript. And so you see here this says hello, and so it's not, but this doesn't say hello, and so it is. So there are some useful things you can do there, like you're like, hey, is the person trying to talk to me in Bangla? And maybe I can do something about it. And if you scroll down here, you can see there are a bunch of different languages people have written. So these are all alphabetical. Um, there's a bunch of Breton, thanks to Nicola, which is great. And this can do things like um, not just tell you, yes, no, this is working, but also make some changes. So these are mutations on uh, strings, which take you maybe from singular to plural or male to female or different things, depending on the language. And you can see here, you've got complicated um, uh, word uh, variations yeah, uh, in, based on stem endings um, in Breton. Um, and then we get more Breton. We also have it here in Croatian, um, here in Dutch, English, very boring language English, but it still has some functions. And, and you can see they go on and on and on. And then um, we've got things like list operations and number characteristics. And so here we can do something like, um, these are boring, uh, so we, I've already shown you add two natural numbers together. But uh, greatest common divisor, explanation of natural numbers, some of these functions are actually um, pretty fundamental uh, operators that you will end up using in a lot of places. Um, so exponentiation of natural numbers, which is a very complex word for n to the power of x. But um, you can see it's got subfunctions already built in, and so on and so forth. And then, uh, because... Um, if you put something on the internet, people who are really interested in a particular subject will find it. Uh, a lot of uh, our Wikifunctions community are very interested in um, integer mathematical operations because we <laughs> opened it up to that first. And so we've got a lot of um, relatively unusual uh, functions like getting the integer number or the Eulerian number and so on and so forth um, that you can play around with. But the really fun thing is that you can do things that are a bit mad. Right, so this is Arabic to Roman numerals. So this is really useful if you're trying to present some data coherently to users, but it's not generally a built-in function that a programming language will provide to you. It's not a standard library feature, um, but our community has built it and it's, it's brilliant. So here you see this translates 3,473 to the Latin equivalent, or sorry, the Roman numerals equivalent. And then let's pick on one very boringly. Um, Yeah, so, so this one this one is not actually, uh, <laughs> the about is meant to be some text, but actually it's just a, a link to English Wikipedia, which isn't quite how things work. Um, but you can see here that these implementations don't say JavaScript or Python next to them, they say composition. If I click through, it will show me this implementation, and this implementation is a bit hard to read if I scroll out. So you see um, the composition is a list of the last element of the first argument reference and the first element of the argument reference. And so what this is doing is it's um, in text form showing you how this works. Uh, without you having to write any code, you're just pulling functions that already exist and mashing them together. And the advantage here, so this is still, I mean, I picked an example that's very technical anyway, but if I can do, um, uh, switch to French, 
and it reloads the page. Um, you see, um, so last element, uh, but reference d'argument. So these words are now not in English anymore. They're now in French. And had more things been added, um, theoretically, none of the words in front of this would be anything other than French. And so again, you'll not just have the experience of using functions only in your language, but also um, being able to create functions only in your language without needing to be technical, without no knowing how to code, without knowing anything. Maybe. Uh, as it is, uh, it takes a bunch of um, uh, technical stuff right now, and we know it's not, not good enough. We want to make things better. But the idea is that we're, we're kind of getting in that direction. So the first thing with that overview, and sorry, I haven't stopped at any point for questions. If anyone has any questions, please just shout them out. Um, oh, thank you, Nicholas. Maybe yeah. I just... yeah. Hello. Uh, oh, uh, I have a bit of a philosophical question. So, mm -hmm. uh, wiki functions, is it a library of practical tools or is it a library of knowledge? I mean that, for example, we have a function uh, of uh, putting some number uh, into the power of another number in its implementation. Do Can we just write uh, mass.pow uh, something, like use uh, uh, an implementation that was already done by uh, Python or JavaScript developers? Or do we provide knowledge how to do that on a CPU level, like uh, how to properly calculate it uh, using Taylor series and uh, uh, so on? Yep. Um, so so there's, a, there's a quick answer, which is both. Uh, um, so I would say the main purpose of wiki functions is to support the Wikimedia community. So that means providing functions that are useful, providing functions that can create Wikipedia articles, that can illustrate Wikicommons concerns, that can link Wikidata items together. But one of the things that's part of the sum of all human knowledge is algorithms, is you know functions. And so if you wanted to demonstrate then you might eventually want to demonstrate how to do things uh, with a function. However, right now, um, we don't have kind of like that interactivity as something we're, we're, we're building. So um, it's not a kind of attempt to prove that you have written every possible function perfectly, right? The point is, does this have value? Is this, I mean, in the same way that uh, Commons has, um, you know, does this media file have, have potential educational reference value for the Wikimedia community. Does this function have value? And so there's there's a discussion ongoing slowly on the Wikifunctions community about what are standards for inclusivity that are kind of touching on that. But so the, the, the main answer would be, yeah, probably limit it to functions that are useful directly, at least for now. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nicolas? <laughs> so I'm wondering, like a lot of functions share constants of various kinds, and I, I noticed like they are all like duplicated and shared. Is there any plans on introducing that as a concept, like functions sharing constants? Um, so when you say sharing constants, like what kind of constants? Like, yeah, you could, for example, have an algorithm which calculate the, the distance between two points on Earth. Mm -hmm. And for that, you need the radius of the Earth. Right, right. And could that somehow be shared or encoded that mm -hmm. all of these functions use the radius of the Earth and it, it is this? Huh. So um, our approach historically has been the... Um, you probably would want first to write a function that is um, calculate on an, a general oblate spheroid um, of arbitrary characteristics, and then you would have a wrapper function around that, which hard codes in the values for Earth or pulls them from Wikidata or whatever. And so from the user perspective, the function would always have the constants available, but the system might be flexible enough that on the back end, it also works for Mars or the Moon or Alpha Centauri Gamma or whatever, right? Um, but... 
actually sharing constants is not a really a thing that we've thought about in that way. We would instead consider them parameters. Okay, thank you very much. Of course. Any more? Oh, one more. Um, so I, I actually have two questions. So the mm -hmm. first one is uh, regarding potential duplicates. So yep. uh, people may, may not know that there's a function already that does certain tasks and create a, another one which, with a slightly different name or something. So uh, first of all, I'm not sure if there's a possibility to have redirects, like just with the names. Uh, uh, not yet, but eventually. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the second question is, uh, uh, is it uh, is there already a possibility, or will there be a possibility to um, for the wiki, for the functions to um, uh, get information from other like Wikimedia projects, like Wikipedia, for example, they can calculate or uh, something or whatever. Like uh, for example, we could have a function that uh, calculates number of characters in a uh, uh, Wikipedia article, let's say, or something. Yeah. Um, so one of the things we're working on right now is being able to pull data from Wikidata, particularly lexeme data, because that's really important for natural language generation, which is kind of like not the only thing we care about, but it's a really big thing that we care about. Um, eventually that will expand, I mean, so obviously to other Wikidata entities. So I want to pull a property, I want to pull an entity, I want to pull an item. Um, but also uh, one of the other things we've talked about is the structured data on commons. So pulling down the, those things. Pulling down arbitrary Wikipedia data, like how many bytes are in an article, um, that's not a thing we've thought about. Um, that could be useful. I can see that. And so that could be something on the roadmap, but that's not, not currently available and, and not particularly planned. But yeah, that's a possibility out there. Cool. Oh, and one more. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I've, I've heard many people who are interested in this being sort of... Um, the platform that supports global templates. Uh, to do that, I can imagine some things might have to change. Uh, just a very simple example would be that um, the function should be able to take parameters which are strings and also kind of a slot parameter, which is a whole block of wiki text, something like this. Um, maybe that gets rendered before or afterwards. But um, is the global functions use case being considered? Is it on the roadmap? Um. The global templates use case. That was thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, no, uh, not by us. Um, there's like a lot of complexities around templates, and um, those are kind of owned the kind of. Uh, I mean, not my job is not a cool answer to this, but like it's not the focus that we're on for Wiki Functions and Abstract Wikipedia. It is um, potentially a use case. Certainly, um, there are. <clears throat> a lot of very deep complexities around community uses of templates that kind of turn a, oh, just do this into a very complex labyrinthine problem that I wouldn't want to kind of say, oh yeah, sure, we can do that with wiki functions, right? That would be disrespectful to all the communities that have different ways of using templates. And so I um, defer to, to uh, Birgit and the rest of the MediaWiki wide um, product work on that rather than try and answer that myself, if that's okay. Oh, oh and, uh, next. Uh, well, I have a rather an odd uh, question that uh, uh, when we are working with string functions, uh, it's important to remember that uh, many languages uh, are constructed in a very uh, different way from how English works. Uh, like uh, in uh, Arabic, uh, a separate letter looks different uh, to when it's uh, inside of a word, or like in Georgian, where there are no uh, lowercase or uppercase letters. And uh, 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 I suggest that you uh, should be uh, uh, remembering to implement that uh, uh, all uh, symbols from different languages work properly, not only uh, Latin characters. And to remember uh, that uh, uh, words and letters in different uh, languages behave uh, very differently and that should be uh, supported. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so I've just quickly demonstrate that um, obviously MediaWiki is really good at language support and we're based on MediaWiki, so we're borrowing a lot of that support. Um, but then there's also uh, 
additional work we need to do to make sure that we're ex uh, supporting all the different uh, string options that people have, like the extended BMP plane from Unicode and things other than that. Uh, there are some challenges regarding um, strings that are composed of particular character sequences and how they render, but um, I'm pretty confident that with our colleagues in the language and internationalization team, um, we will be able to solve them. But yeah, it's very much a thing of like, if you just write a function that works on strings, but it only works on Latin strings, then that really, I would hope the wiki functions community would say that that's not good enough. And they would say, here are some test cases that demonstrate your function needs to be better before we would approve it because it needs to support Cyrillic, it needs to support Arabic, it needs to support um, Thai, all these languages that use uh, ca different character ranges. So um, I will switch this back out from Russian, because otherwise I will get lost. Um, I was thinking um, that um, the first thing I might do is demonstrate creating a function in front of everyone, and then I'd invite people to... Um, create their own if you have a laptop available, or we can talk through what that involves. So does anybody have an idea for a function we could create? Because foolishly, I didn't plan one earlier. Anyone? Yeah. Well, uh, I have a tricky one. I tried uh, to do it nice. myself, but I realized that it's much harder than I thought. That I thought to create a function that where you give uh, it uh, red, blue, and green component, and it gives out uh, the uh, language title for that uh, color. Mm. So that's that's interesting. I, I, I. So I can definitely see that's a valuable thing. Um, but I would say that I think that kind of data shouldn't live inside a function in wiki functions. It should live on wiki data where the community controls. Um, those data points, and then we link them, and then we pull them in, and that's not available yet. Oh, sorry. C can I propose an easy one? Yeah, even uh, better. So, uh, since I study ancient Greek, uh, in ancient Greek there was a numbering system with uh, the 24 letters of the ancient alphabet plus other, plus other five, mm -hmm. and each letter was used for uh, 1, 2, 3, 10, 20, 30, 100, 200, 300. So, the ancient Greek numbering system, a conversion to the our numbering system in Arab uh, mm -hmm. Arab digits. That sounds that sounds really interesting. I think we should be able to do that. And yeah, and it should be simple because just uh, the equivalence is one letter and two one number. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> we let let's find out if it's simple. But no, let's let's uh, try that out. Um, okay, so now we're going to do something a little uh, complicated. So. So this is the type for integer. So I showed briefly the type for natural number because I wanted you to cry. And now this is even worse. This is the type for integer. And this this design is not meant to make you go, oh, I know exactly what to do here. This is this is like pre-release design because we like we prioritized working on functions that can do things together. But if I scroll all the way down here, um, you will see that there is a function here called display integer, which is a renderer which takes an integer and a language and turns it into something. And so you can see here, um, this is doing Croatian, English, British, English. Let's find, uh, oh yeah, sorry, I will zoom in a bit more. Um, display functions for natural number. Oh, oy vey. Okay, so, yeah, so this is the function we wrote as a community um, which says that if your language is English, Australian English, British English, Simple English, or American English, then add commas between triples if there are more than four digits, right? So this is the kind of comma separator for thousands. And then this adds periods between them if it's Italian, Norwegian, or Spanish. And then this adds a thin space if it's Danish, French, or Canadian French, and so on and so forth, right? And so this is how you turn um, the raw data into something that's displayed to the user. And um, then it has a default back here. And I think somewhere, but I cannot see it for the life of me right now, um, we had something that, uh, is this it? This was taken, uh, maybe not. Um, we had something somewhere that was actually, 
I cannot see it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. We. It has been more than an hour since I last looked at this, and so I've forgotten everything. Um, there, there is a... Um, so we... Oops. Uh, Roman to Arabic numeral. Uh, yeah, so this isn't actually a renderer. Okay. Well, let's just do it like that, then. So let's... Uh, I will go here, and I'll say... Uh, well, apparently I will not go here. I'll do... Um, uh, Special create object. And I say, I want to create a function, please. Um, and then I would say, so this is um, Latin numerals to ancient Greek. Right? Is that? Oh, sure. Yeah. Because uh, passing from Latin to ancient Greek probably requires an intermediate passage to Arabic, so doing mm -hmm. ancient Greek to Arabic is sure. easier. Sure, let's do it this way around. So this will take, um, okay. uh, as an input, this will take a string, I guess. Yeah. And it will, uh, should it take a string or should it output a numeral? Maybe it should output a number. Yeah. Oh. So we'll say that. Natural number, yeah. Um, so this is, again, this is something that the community can decide. Like, actually, we think this should go to a string or go to a number or go from number to number, whatever. Um, and then as a description, convert a string of ancient Greek numerals into a natural <laughs> number rendered using Arabic. And uh, you'll notice I have four characters left of this short description, so I guess we've achieved it just about. Yep. Yeah, just a question. The first field, is it uh, locked for editing? Oh, um, it, once you've started writing content, it locks for the rest of the form. Um, but I could add a different language. Like, I could go here and then say I want to do it in French as well, okay. and then add the name in French and descriptions, and everything is optional once you've added the first uh, number. But I don't have, off the top of my hand, uh, off the top of my head, how I would nicely say this in French, so I'll leave it. No, it has to be done in a language. Uh, it's in English because that's what my interface language is in. Actually, it's in uh, British English, not English English, which I didn't really mean, but never mind. Um, and... Par contre. <laughs> hmm? well, we see that when you added the French, it automatically locked without any content being added. Uh, yes, because I tabbed away from it. Yeah, there was a there's a bug somewhere that we should add a drop this button, but this is only in the public. I would have a uh, a question. So mm -hmm. we have uh, we uh, we see that we had the if statements for like languages, yeah, and then the default, and we had one where we had French and then Canadian French. Yeah, I wonder if we had removed Canadian French, would it be like a subclass of French, so no. would still apply. <laughs> no, so so um, that function we were looking at before, um, it it only matches on language, and so if you don't match, it falls through to the default, which was um, I think just the numbers with no spaces or commas. Um, there are some very complicated um, concepts around language uh, hierarchies and inheritance, and we have not currently implemented those. Again, part of the, uh, the, the magical future of language support we want to add. So, so we've created this function, or rather, we've created this definition of a function. Yep. Uh, sorry, uh, I just want to give an ideas for easier functions that maybe everyone here can also try. Mm -hmm. So how about uh, functions that convert uh, natural numbers to currency. Okay. Yeah, that's certainly a thing we could do. I don't want to um, steal all the good ideas for people who want to do it themselves. So so shall we go with this one for now and, and see how far we get? We may not get very far because there's only uh, 49 minutes left of the session and, and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> so as a test, we're going to, um, sorry, the first thing we should generally do is after we've um, created a function definition is 
you write some tests to, to show to other members of the community who may not even speak any languages that you do what you expect the inputs and the outputs to pairwise be. So if we will go here, and um, it says, so you call Arabic, uh, ancient Greek to Arabic, and um, excellent. There we go. We say Greek numerals. Fantastic. So, the, oh, good grief, these are very small. Um, is there a nice, there's a nice table here. No, 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 no. Now, did we decide we were doing the ancient ones? Oh, are these images? Oh, these are images. Oh, that's less helpful. They are moderately less copyable when they're not actually text. Uh, we could do simple instead. Okie dokie. Oh, that's much more copyable. Okay. So, let's say... Um, this should result in 10. And then we remember to add a label. Uh, let's actually change this to real regular English. And then we say um, the is 10. And OK, publish. And ta da. And then we go back to the function. And you'll see I have proposed. Oh, other people are writing implementation test cases. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Uh, so I have written this. Other people have written these. This is brilliant. So I can, so I have, I mean, I have a staff account, so I can do lots of things, but I'm also a functioner on a uh, wiki function. So the community um, accounts that allow you to do this step, which you connect these tests. So connecting these tests means we, the community, have agreed that these tests are the right answers. And I'm taking it on faith that these... Um, <laughs> This is five and these are ten, because otherwise I'll be sad. Um, well, so presumably one of these is not ten. Um, or maybe both of them are ten? I don't know. Uh, technology is hard. Um, uh, so the next step, once you've done that, is um, you write an implementation. And so I think probably the easiest thing for us to do here is to write a JavaScript thing. And um, I can cheat. And I can just say... Um, uh, switch um, Z good grief one eight five five mm, five one five K one that needs brackets doesn't it you know it's amazing how little JavaScript you remember when you when your IDE does it all for you um, uh, case thing uh, return uh, come sir, no, no, this is wrapped, isn't it? There we go. So I've now done this. So if I give it, um, I'm just going to have it always return zero in default, so that at least it returns something. And so if I give it an input of hello. Oh, because I've not connected it. Um, well, let's publish this. I should have added a label, but I didn't. So this will now run, and hopefully, he says, these test cases up here are now running, and we can watch them not run, because I'm doing a demo with live technology, which means it will never work. Um, but this should it fail faster. Okay, yeah, that's not good. Um, gateway timeout, <laughs> really? Service unavailable. Oh, okie dokie. So, turns out, um, our backend service has fallen over, which is brilliant timing. Uh, <sighs> well, there's limited what uh, demonstration I can add at this point. Um, uh, in terms, in t I mean, can run it again, but if the service is over, over then it's over. Oh, so this one worked. So, ta-da, this function is now working. Um, so you'll see, of the three test cases, the first two failed and the last one succeeded, because the last one I actually tried to make it work and the other two I gave up. Um, so, but um, I am going to cheat and I'm going to copy this and click Edit. And, whoopsie daisy, and there we go. And then I can do 
case. Da. Uh, I don't care about this. Da. Uh, right, and then uh, this one means. Okay, so if I now publish this with the two versions of 10 and all and the version of 5, and now we run the tests, they all pass. Success. But So the thing to understand here is that if you go to the function view at this point, we now have, okay, now we have more tests, which is good. Um, if you went to the function view before, uh, there was an implementation and three tests, and all the tests were passed by the implementation. And so you would look at that and be like, oh, so clearly it's perfect. And actually we know that it's just hard-coded three separate values, and that's not actually working correctly. So this new test case demonstrates that you would need to do more work on that implementation before you would use it. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so right now I think the tests only accept one, one answer. Uh, is it possible in the future to have the possibility of adding like two variants if, if both of them are acceptable for as output? Yeah, so um, so this is actually both of these are function calls here on the on the on the test case thing, and in this particular case, it's it's def it already pre it already prefills equality of natural numbers as the call you're making here, but you can actually change that and say actually no, I want to do an or command. And then uh, this, instead of being a uh, boolean, I want this to be a function call, and I want the function call to be this or this, and that kind of stuff. So you can you can edit the mechanism by which it returns, um, so that the test case says result is one of one, two, three, four, something like that. Um, but it is a lot more complicated, <laughs> and hopefully most functions will have a single response. That's kind of the main direction we're aiming for. Um, and so uh, I'm going to leave this alone. Oh. And and so that's why it, um, it defaults to equality. Okay. Yeah, but I actually, what the um, case I'm thinking of is, uh, for example, if we have a like, for example, there's these, these functions for a cardinal mm -hmm. numbers, and maybe in some languages there could be two different variants of the how to output the the cardinal, and maybe we can have one implementation that outputs one one yeah. variant, another another implementation that outputs the other variant, say, and both of them should be should be correct, I think, in terms of. Uh, yep. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, once you start getting into natural language uh, parsing, it gets very complicated very quickly. So um, uh, numbers that are uh, very based not just on the the number, obviously, of the things you're talking about, but the gender of the things you're talking about, the the existence of them being f fictional or, or current historical, you know, lots of different uh, ways in which languages make these things complicated and we have to support those. Um, so, th so, you know, you would end up having functions that would take those potentially as inputs of like, is is the quantity I'm talking about a um, an item that's uh, female, right? And yes, no. And if it was female, then you would give this answer. And if it's male, you give this answer, that kind of thing. But yeah, um, if you had like an overall test suite, you might want to just accept any of those outputs. But um, for natural language generation, you might actually really care which one of them is responded because it's the correct one. Okay. Uh, I well, th there is a, well, for English, for example, this would not be the case because mm -hmm. uh, the, the the spelling is pretty standardized, I would say. But for example, uh, in some like dialects, let's say uh, you could have three, four v different v varieties of mm -hmm. uh, spelling for particular words, and then essentially you have to sort of accept all, all of these different variances as, as, uh, uh, as, as correct answers, essentially. So um, that, that, that's one case I think of like where you, you could have like a single function, but y you will have to accept different uh, implementations that yeah, give yeah. you different answers. Yeah, and you might also want, um, if something is a, a calculation, you might want it to be a tolerance um, request. You know, so like, um, what's the square root of, of, of 25, right? There are two valid answers, 5 and minus 5, right? You know, giving you one answer and not the other is not necessarily correct, but it might be what the users expect. And so you'd, you, that would, again, be a thing for the Wikifunctions community to decide through its test suite. And, you know, that's an agreement. Hopefully that doesn't involve edit warring, <laughs> but that involves people talking to each other on talk pages, on, on the village pump or wherever is appropriate. Cool. 
Oh, yep. Yeah, well, uh, you just mentioned the, uh, about the question that I was meant to ask. Is it, well, what to do when we have multiple valid answers, like when we get a square root, we can uh, get plus number or minus number, or where we have an arc sign, you just uh, uh, add or uh, uh, decrement to pi uh, as many times as you want, and uh, that will be all valid uh, answers, what to do in that case. And another question is, uh, well, now we are constrained to integers and uh, strings, but there is much more to do with real numbers, uh, complex numbers, uh, uh, there uh, are a lot of to do with uh, uh, daytime points, uh, geographical coordinates, and so on. So will those be implemented in the observable future? So, yep. Uh, we are currently working on dates, which are interestingly complicated for something that we use every day um, between different languages, different eras. Are you proleptic or are you actually marked to the real calendar as used? Is the, is the real calendar, which real calendar? And then, uh, you know, all that different stuff. So just dates is hard. Um, so we now have uh, the concept of, of year eras and so on and so forth getting added. For real numbers, um, there are kind of there are IEEE standards for uh, single and um, double um, uh, accuracy floating points, which is probably what we would want to implement because that is familiar to most users. But it is also very um, limited; is too strong. But it's, it 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 has it has its limits on what you can and can't do. And then you have um, multi-part um, variables like geophysical coordinates, where you have three separate values, like you know. <laughs> Yeah, the latitude, the longitude, and the altitude above um, the datum. But then implicitly, you have what object are you having an, an uh, observational point around? Is that Earth? Is that current Earth or former Earth? You know, because um, former Earth was less ablate. You know, if you want to get very technical, um, are you using WGS84? Do, you know, is that appropriate? What value of the North Pole are you currently using? Those kind of things. And um, I don't think that it's appropriate for me at the foundation to tell the community what they want to do with their functions, right? Um, so we can provide that platform, but I think it's the wiki functions community that may, needs to decide what is valuable, what's useful, and how we can support that. Uh, for multiple answers, yeah, again, um, if, if there are multiple answers and that's valuable, then it should return them as a list of, ans of potential answers, if or um, whatever, you know, again, depending on the use case. Yeah. Yes. Um, so my, I would imagine the regular arc sign would be limited within the standard range and, you know, you'd mo modulo against 2 pi or whatever. Um, but uh, again, uh, that you might have two different variants of arc sign, one of which is, you know, always t tight within a range and one of which could be any value, you know, to infinity. Yeah. I tried to, to translate mm -hmm. uh, the function you made in French, and the users, user doesn't have permission to edit. Oh, no. Oh, I'm oh, very sorry yes. to hear that. Um, is this, uh, are you logged in? Yes. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in that that's case, a that, that's a bug. Um, <laughs> there, there is a known, sorry, we have uh, set up the wiki, so we're still in early stages of the wiki. One of the early stages is that IP editors do not have the right to edit yet. Um, and given that um, temporary accounts are coming, uh, by the time we are ready to switch that on, they will be temporary accounts rather than IPs. But it's, you know, the same thing. We will enable that eventually. But any regular logged in account should have the ability to edit regular uh, items. Uh, so I'm really sorry that that has been a bug for you. Um, we've got a value in Dagbani already, which is great. So um, that's one of our uh, priority languages and we're really happy to support them. So that's cool. So uh, we have um, a little over half an hour left in the session, I believe. And I was thinking that'd be really great if people wanted to try and edit themselves, um, if they can. And I'm happy, I'm happy to keep talking, but I'm much more happy to help people do this themselves, run into errors, find concerns they have, 
run out of the room because this isn't the session they actually wanted to be in. All those things are options. What works? Any questions, thoughts, ideas? Yeah. I'm trying to create an. I'm trying to create a new test for mm -hmm. one function, but I don't get how to do it. Sure, sure. Um, would it be helpful if I demoed up here? Yeah, but I, I only have published, but I don't have how to add the result. It says uh -huh. that it has no valid implementation, appropriate implementation. So you're on a page like this? Yes. And you click the expand here to change what the expected value is of the input. And then this is... I have type, function, text. Okay. I'm training now a new one that was split. It may not have loaded correctly in the JavaScript. Okay, but it was a split a sentence oh. created by Sebastian Berlin now. Ah, well then. Segment sentence. Yep. Oh, yeah, that. It's always fun when you use software you've fixed a bug in and you realize the bug fix hasn't gone to production yet, which is why it's still there. Uh, so we see we have lots of things being created. This is great. Um, Maybe you can zoom a bit. Yep. Especially. Uh, maybe not too much. Segment sentence. So here you want to say, um, okay, an example. Example of hello world, and then the result validation should be. What's it replying with? The type. Oh. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Yep. So in this case, you would want a list equality. <sighs> Actually, list length is probably enough. Length of a list, and you want. Well, it'd be really great if this would do anything, but it won't. Uh, function call. Uh, no, this is wrong. How bizarre. Uh, if I click in the result validation there, yep, I don't have anything to choose. I have function call, which is gray, and then yep. function, which is empty. Yes, and if you click the expand here, does it give you the ability to no. set the function? No. Oh, that's intriguing. That table clearly has something going wrong, oh, right? Oh, yes, I oh, have no. to write something. But yeah, it, I don't know what to write. It's not a select. Yeah. yeah, it's a drop down, but you have to type in some text to prompt it. Yeah. Um, you have to start somewhere. So this would be a. Oh dear, why is it not going to do? Uh, it's got confused. I'm going to give up. Um, yeah, so, so things with more complex types, like lists of strings, get messy, is the polite way of putting it, um, because converting a list of strings to a JavaScript array of strings, then back to a list of type strings, is a potentially lossy behavior in the system right now, and um, lossy in terms of the metadata about what types the contents are. Because if those were actually function calls that resulted in strings versus actual static strings, the user experience would be different. Anyway, none of you care. Uh, but I, I, we need to fix it. Yeah. Um, uh, I was um, thinking like the, the suggest, like the idea that uh, Anton mentioned earlier about the trigonometric uh, uh, functions, for example, if it outputs like arc tangent or something. Yeah. So uh, would it be possible to have the test itself as a function that like, or at least it invokes a function to, to, to run a test? Yeah. So, so here we've got this, which is a function call and it directly calls a function that just takes a static input. But this could actually, as well as being a reference to a function call, be itself a function call. And so you could be like, is today Tuesday, then run this function. Is today Wednesday, run this function. Please, please don't do that. But you can do things like that. So much more complicated things like um, you could say, what is, I mean, so the renderers frankly work like this, right? We say, here's a, a number and here's a language. And it goes, what language is this? And what 
value is this? Is this zero? In that case, just do this thing. Is this French? Okay, go down the French path. Is this uh, German? Go down the German path. And so you have functions within functions, and they can cascade quite far down. So this already works right now? Or um, yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, I look forward to you telling me no uh, and us fixing that bug. But yeah, you can, um, you can uh, do f uh, nested function calls quite deeply. Okay. So uh, could you, for example, also uh, say that you have a function, another one which does the opposite? So you could basically test each other by yep. like... Yeah, we have yeah. Uh, a few pairs of functions like that, which um, I think uh, there's a reverse string function which tests itself by running itself twice. Um, but or like add one and take away one and it you know they chain them together and see that you get the same result at the end. Okay, so th this runs as a test. It's not like a, a separate function. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, you can write it as a separate function as well if it's useful to users. But generally, you know, the test cases are potentially quite complicated tests, and uh, we write them to be assured as a community that this t function is doing what we expect it to do in various edge cases, right? It's like, think of it like a QA test suite rather than as a um, uh, demonstration to users what they want to do. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, you. Elwin, Elwin. Oh, there you go. Do you have to create a new account there? No, this is, uh, yeah, this is um, single user login. So this is the same account as your Wikipedia account, as your Wikidata account, as your Commons account. Because you may not be logged in. If you've logged in, well, actually, it's quite impressive if you've not automatically logged in because uh, we've got single user login live since July last year. But if your account has somehow not gone through a login event in, in 13 months, if you log in on the wiki, it will accept your username and password, should accept your username and password for Wikipedia or whatever. No, it, it, does, it doesn't show me the option, like mm. the tool. Oh, huh. well, that's very interesting. And also, when I tried to create an account, it says this username is too similar yeah, to oh. your username. And then, yeah. That. Try to log in. You have to create it. Yes, you shouldn't create the account. Yeah. And then and then that's not, that's not. More bugs. I mean, you know, I come to Wikimania to find more bugs in my software because there weren't enough in Fabricator already, right? <laughs> so do we want to look at one of the functions that people have been creating or singing outside? Not sure if that's coming through on the uh, feed. Uh, yeah, I don't care. Ah. Aha. Uh, just a question. Maybe I missed it mm -hmm. already, but can you create functions that give like natural language output already or not yet? Um, yeah, so there are some natural language uh, functions. Um, they are mostly quite limited. Um, if I go to lots of enjoyable singing outside. Um, mm? Oh yeah, so so there are some very basic functions like plural functions, like you give it um, fish and it says fish, or fishes. English is horrible. Um, uh, cat and cats and so on and so forth. But there's also um, some. Should explain that. English. Okay. Uh, so my idea was to create a function that gives the names of capital cities of different countries. Right. Um, so for that, um, you would. Mostly the big bit there is the data lookup, right? Of like, and that would require like access to to Wikipedia, well, Wikidata, and we don't have that yet, so um, not really. But we have so this um, you give it fish, and it hopefully gives me Fisher, or maybe not. Maybe it just gives me nothing. Maybe it gives me timeout. Isn't this fun? Isn't technology wonderful? Um, it gives me errors, and what? the errors are timeout. So that took nine seconds to tell me it didn't work. Well, that's great. Um, um, that is a good question. We look forward to finding out and fixing it. <laughs> um, like services getting overloaded a bunch with very low frequency use, and we're not quite sure what's triggering it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, back to <laughs> my function again. I'm trying to test it and it's a gray, gray box that says this function has no improved implementations. Yes. So until an, so, so ultimately, uh, 
our colleagues in security and SRE described wiki functions as a uh, remote code execution in a box um, as a service. Essentially, we are letting people write code and then we run it in our production servers. And that is a deeply scary thing. And so uh, to combat that, we have a bunch of security mitigations in place, including everything's wrapped in, obviously, Docker and Kubernetes and Wasm and a whole bunch of other things. But one of the other things there is that um, functions have to be approved before you can run them, even um, functions that just do something simple, because um, uh, there is lots of really great computer science out there that proves that you can't computationally prove anything about a program, including whether it's safe. Um, so we are relying on humans to be like, yes, this looks okay to me, I'm approving it. I glossed over this a lot, when I did it, because I just self-approved my own code, because that's fine, and I'm in a demo, um, and it's my system to root, basically. But uh, if I break it, I have to fix it. Um, but yeah, so so if we go to here, you'll see this is listed as connected, and if I click here and click disconnect, then this um, won't work anymore, and you won't be able to run it until someone comes along and approves it for you. So that's um, the that right, we call that right the functioneer right, and that is a community-held right, and they hand it out um, to people they trust, which is um, right now a pretty open, welcoming community. So, you know, if you're interested, please come along and you'll, you know, they'll be pretty happy to hand it out, probably. I wanted to just demonstrate, by the way, this um, great NLG function, which takes fish and turns it to fisher, will also take fisher and turn it to fisher -er someone who fishes fishes, I don't know. Um, so like garbage in, garbage out, very much an issue when you have basic natural language generation, it's not hooked up to a lexicon, right? So something to bear in mind is that once we're actually pulling data from Wikidata Lexeme and the Wiki, Wikidata community can control <laughs> what the data is, then you're more likely to have both a much wider range of words and more power, but also it's more likely to um, prompt the user to do the right thing. Right. Uh yeah somewhat connected at least. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to write the tests before you publish a function? Y so I can see that it kind of no. works. Okay, no. So, I mean, yes. Uh, you can... So one of the fields in the data model you have to fill in is when you're saying I am a test case is what function are you a test case for? And if that doesn't exist yet, you can't point to it. Oh, sorry, I said function, I meant implementation. Oh yeah, no, no, you definitely can do test cases before implementations. That's our preferred model. Okay. Um, so in fact, so. Um, this is not currently the case. In fact, I'm always doing that, creating the test first and like, wait, what I am trying to create and then I can write the code. But I'm, I'm always reminded of, of people saying, well, what I want is a do what I mean function and we're like uh-huh cool can you write out the the what's the input and what the expected output is because eventually you can you know if that's complex enough you can write the f implementation based on the the expected test cases hi uh this is probably more of a uh, high level question not not specifically about editing wiki functions but what is the vision about connecting these to other function repositories, uh, like Wikidata has the external identifiers? I've heard of projects like uh, FunGrim, Leans, Matlib, uh, Veltown, there's Wolfram function something, mm -hmm. I forgot the name. So is there any way to, or any plans to connect these, like this would, could be a hub? Like um, there are not currently plans to do that, either from a kind of import MATLAB into wiki functions or just authority control cross-referencing. Um, I would, I would say, so you can, there are wiki data items about wiki functions pages, so you can write a authority control statement on wikidata.org about Z12345 saying this is the same as MATLAB function X, right? Um, it is very messy, complicated, and legally problematic to start importing software libraries um, from outside where um, we might want to do things to them. Like, we're, this is the MATLAB function that does X, uh, ignoring copyright, and then now it does Y because we wanted it to be better. Now MATLAB is saying, hey, you say this is a MATLAB function, but it's not a MATLAB function anymore, right? So um, we do not... Um, particularly plan that. Um, but again, 
we are here to support the Wikimedia movement and the community. And if the Wiki Functions community says, we've got this really good use case and we need this to work, can you make it work? Then that's what we're here to do. Yeah, uh, actually, we had the discussion uh, two days ago, so very recently, and we saw that the NASA special agency is publishing open license codes mm -hmm. that is more or less doing things that we want to do, someone was wanting to do, so like, maybe we should just take it, so we'll be doing some limited testing to see how it could work. But it's just the beginning. Yeah, if, uh, if, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, um, uh, we worked with the lawyers on the licensing, and so all of the function definitions, labels, and documentation, the main namespace, i.e. the content you write through the form, is CC0, um, so like Wikidata, all of the code fragments and implementations are Apache 2.0. Um, and we kind of work back and forth about like what license is the one that's most scalable for the use cases that we have that we can embed easily without um, risking legal issues. And so that's where we're at. Just to clarify, I was not talking about importing the code mm -hmm. itself, just linking like in a Wikidata item has yeah. extra identifiers. So that, that could happen on Wikidata, yeah, right now. So is it supposed to, that every function would have, like a Wikipedia article has a Wikidata item? Is this the expectation for Wikifunk? No, um, I don't think that's likely useful for the Wikidata community. Again, that's a Wikidata community decision, not for me to decide one way or the other. Um, so like the, the concept of a highest common factor or like, you know, that thing, those already have I mean, bluntly, most of them already have Wikipedia articles, and so they already have a Wikidata uh, identity um, that you would link it against. But, I mean, and that we do have some uh, Wiki Functions pages that are linked from Wikidata, as this is the, the Wiki Functions page of the lowest common denominator. But um, in general, um, these are more like um, file pages, right? And you don't have a Wikidata entity about every file on commons, but some files represent a thing that you do have a Wikidata entity about because this is a famous painting, a famous a photo of a famous statue, that kind of thing. Does that answer the question? Cool. Uh, another question is sure. uh, about functions uh, when uh, we uh, categorize things like uh, oh, in, into which group the input should uh, belong. For example, mm -hmm. uh, if you take a word and you decide uh, uh, if it is a masculine uh, grammatical form, feminine or neuter, you need to return a value which is uh, a concept, not a string, not a number. Yep. It is a concept of masculine gender uh, form or neuter and uh, is it possible uh, how can you do that if it is possible uh yep so if i go so um oh this takes the number well that's not helpful um so much for that yeah so we have um the concept of types which have a uh, identity field to them, and consequently values of them are, you know, okay, this is not going to work. Um, so so the, the reference example that we built this for is uh, male, female, neuter, but also months, so you know, like January to December, you don't get extra months. Um, Igbo, by the way, which we also have Igbo months in, has 13 months in a year, not 12. So, you know, it's not obviously hard-coded that it's 12. Um, Ah, do we have a last date of a day in a given month? So here I will say, yeah, so you say select month and you see it's got a drop down here of the value of the months. It is helpfully um, sorted these in um, database creation order rather than in internal sort order, which we should fix. Um, so you get August, September, December, November, October, we can fix that. But um, so you see here, you get a drop down. Similarly, if it was, it could be male, female, neuter, first person, second person, third person, accusative, nominative, dative, ablative, all that different grammatical um, features would be drop downs or, or whatever appropriate uh, controls. I, I created a new function, mm -hmm. uh, Byzantine to Arabic numeral, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems to work. I oh, have added one example and the function, and there are just 27 digits uh, that are Greek letters converted into the, um, the number. Mm -hmm. But um, 
so the result, as of now, I said that the result is a number. Mm -hmm. But I think that the function uh, should be able to tell you that uh, if the number that you are entering, so if the letters that you are entering are not a number, but are something that uh, is just incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in this case, what I have to do, uh, the premise is that I am not able presently to code it into Python. Yeah. But if I were able to do it, uh, how would I have to do it? Uh, so, Like the same letter cannot be repeated, otherwise the number is malformed. It is not a number. Yeah, so so in that case, uh, probably the best thing to do would be to throw an error in Python. It? Uh, throw an error. Okay. Uh, and then um, the okay. outer function that wraps it would handle that situation in whatever okay. it is, right? So um, that would be part of the function's contract of like, if you give me some content and it's not valid, okay. then you get an error back. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, you could pair it up. So we have a lot of is um, functions as well as get, right? So the, is this valid Byzantine, you know, numerology, that kind of stuff. And so you could do that first and then do the second one. And if you didn't do the first one, then it's your fault that it threw an error, that kind of thing. Um, but again, um, those are separate functions controlled differently. And so the community would have to make sure that they agreed as to what was valid <laughs> and invalid uh, between them. Otherwise, users might get confused and upset. Any further? Oh, Nicolas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're doing all the work. Why are you not standing here and I can run with the microphone? <laughs> okay, my question is, I tried to, um, you answered one of the questions um, partially earlier um, because I was getting no implementation as well. So I want to ask that, uh, is there a way is there a necessary thing you have to do before your um your function can be, I mean it can be approved? Then is there any is it possible for you to be blocked on wiki function? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So so um right now there's no um kind of there's not a big process of people patrolling uh new functions to approve them. So uh, there's a there's a community page where you can say, hey, can someone approve this function and someone will approve it if they like it or tell you no and tell you why not. Um, uh, but wiki functions is wiki, so you can get blocked if uh, people don't like you. Um, <laughs> ideally, it's because you're doing bad things rather than just they don't like you, right? But um, uh, And we're also, we're part of the Wikimedia-wide cluster, so if you're globally blocked, your account won't be able to um, edit functions or run functions. Um, so you can also... Um, run these functions as you can see um well i mean i can't show you here because this is wrong but i want what was the last tuesday in march in uh 2024 2024 and it will run and it will give me an answer apparently the, good grief that this is not a good format but never mind the 26th of march was the last tuesday in march this year um but if i were globally blocked this button um would I think be disabled, and certainly when you ran it, it would give you an error. Um, now that I'm doubting myself, would it be disabled? Small question, maybe I missed mm -hmm. it. Um, is it possible to reuse these functions? Like a two, for instance, there is one uh, function called is Breton plural, mm -hmm. so I would like to get it for the mm -hmm. Quechua easily and just change the input. Yeah, um, you mean reuse it in a different function? So the same function, mm -hmm. but for the different language. Uh, yeah, just recreate it. Uh, copy recreate paste. it, I have yeah. from scratch. Uh, yeah, well, you could copy paste the bits that you care about, but like the, the labels are pretty simple. Okay, but if it's a f large function, let's say, then? No, not currently, but yeah, that, okay. that's something we could add. We had the gadget for duplicating function. Oh. It went horribly well. Very uh, horribly wrong. Sorry. Uh, or also known as a gadget. Yeah, it was a gadget. <laughs> yeah. It's um, so not the, good now. The, the front end of Wiki Functions is under very active development. Like we ship five, ten patches every week, and so it's really hard for a gadget author to keep track of that and keep it working. Um, so uh, if there is a good need for that, we could build that properly. Um, but yeah, if you file a fabricated task, we can talk about it. 
Hey Hi, um, thank you for the demo. Can you put a wiki function into another wiki function, and how versatile is that? Uh, so, uh, no, you cannot right now. Uh, we're building it. Um, stay tuned. Um, uh, there's more in the state of wiki functions uh, talk uh, in two days' time, um, but hopefully soon. And in terms of flexibility as to what that does, um, so that will take inputs and do a calculation, give you an output. It, and so the restriction is that the output will be in textual form, plain text form. So it won't give you HTML, it won't give you pretty bar graphs or boxes with colors and things like that, but it will be able to say, you know, five miles is eight kilometers. It will be able to tell you that <clears throat> it's been 43 days since blah happened. You, it, those kind of function calls that people uh, use a lot. And, uh, Eventually, we w will add um, other features, which may include HTML fragment support. But let's let's crawl before we walk, before we run, right? And I don't want to promise things that haven't sh haven't even been worked on yet, right? Oh, what's the status update on API? Uh, so there is an API. So if you go to uh, api.wikimedia.org slash uh, wiki functions API, this is totally unreadable. Um, but um, there is uh, a highly documented, stable uh, uh, API, and you can click through API references. I uh, go away. Um, and then I can be, oh, this is actually not interesting as much. Um, but you can go here, and you can see um, this is how a function would work, and it's got examples in curl, in Python, in PHP, and in JavaScript of how you would be able to call that. The, that you can call that from anywhere on the web. Um, it's not you know, like only works for Wikipedia or only works inside the tool server or something like that. Um, uh, but uh, you are subject to our um, acceptable use policy for APIs at Wikimedia, and these are pretty expensive APIs. So, like, talk to us if you're going to call them a million times a day, because no one else will be able to use the site, <laughs> and neither will you. Did that answer your question? James, could yeah. you demonstrate one line time how do you connect a um, test? For instance, uh, there's the first uh, Basque wiki function, apparently. Ah, fantastic. Uh, if you look in the recent Euskarasco plural. Oh, no, this is the language Basque. This is not so interesting. Oh, yes, because we also have our whole set of language codes in wiki functions because. Our concept of language, Wikidata's concept of language, MediaWiki's concept of language are all slightly different things, um, which is going to be really powerful in the future, but right now is just really irritating, and so I'm sorry for people that get tripped up by that. I get tripped up by that too. Uh, so, Galdo, is this Basque plural noun? Right, and so you have an implementation. This is written in Python. It has ends with, ends with, yeah, that looks fine, so I will approve. Ta-da! It is alive. Woo! Um, all the tests fail, but it's live. <laughs> so if I type, this obviously is not Basque. And it will run, and it will run, and it will run. And I didn't actually look, and it will give me an error, because, oh yeah, it needs some improvement, but like, Yep. So I, I went to the implementation and I read through it and uh, this looks fine. Oh, oh right. Yeah, there's a copy paste error. So I'm going to fix it. So, so this, this outside definition block we provide automatically and that's what is called by the executor engine inside um, the service. And so I will just fix all of these references. Amongst other things. Um, voila. Et puis... Ta-da! Ta-da! So it ran and it put AK on the end, which I understand is the regu regular um, plural in Basque-ish. Obviously not with the string hello one normally. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, it's got 
Yeah, so um, English doesn't fall back to Basque, but Basque falls back to English because MediaWiki. So, uh, yeah, one of the things we're currently looking at is whether we should fall back to language labels that aren't normally in MediaWiki's fallback chain because something is better than nothing. So stay tuned. Uh, so to... Sorry, so I, w I went here, and I clicked hit this checkbox, and I clicked hit the connect box. But you'll only have that if you're a functioneer. Or other. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike is here first. Yeah. I'll come to you. Oh. Um, what happens when the language that my implementation is changes, like Python 4 or yep. whatever? So that's a really good question. Uh, so if you actually go and have so much fun, you can go to our internal language codes, because why would we have anything more simple than that? So we actually don't just call it JavaScript inside the system. It's referenced as um, JavaScript, actually, <clears throat> inside the system right now is referenced as JavaScript, uh, Z600. But normally this would be um, Node 20, Node 18, or whatever. As we rolled out new languages, these would appear in the dropdown as, you know, new JavaScript, old JavaScript, legacy JavaScript, obsolete JavaScript, whatever. And then we would potentially test your code against not only the version you wrote it against, but newer versions. And if it passes all the tests, we'll just silently mark it as part of Python 4. And if it doesn't pass the test, we'll flag it to the community and say, hey, there's this function. It's called 20 times a day, and it's in Python 3.12, and it doesn't work in Python 4. Can some human go have a look at it, please? Um, one of the benefits of that is obviously you're not reliant on a single user to maintain their code forever. There's a community of wikis. It's not, uh, you know, wiki is a community, not a one-person state. Um, the downside there is that there is a cost to each language we add to production in terms of the community's time, not just our time. Like, our time costs literal dollars, but community's time is value, valuable as well, right? And if we just say one particular user wants us to add this one language and we ship it, and then we're like no other human is around to fix their functions now that they've gone, that's quite bad. And so there's going to be um, a community process to talk about um, if we're adding new languages, how we, that happens, both in terms of new versions of existing languages, but also new full languages. Like one of the languages that is most common on, on Wikimedia properties is Lua, but actually it's a MediaWiki specific fork of Lua from 12 years ago. 11 years ago. And so when people say, I want you to add Lua, we're like, which Lua do you want us to add? Because Lua's moved on quite a bit in those 11 years and also has a bunch of functions that are taken out of the MediaWiki Lua. And so there's some very complicated questions to answer about what a language is. And we don't want to preempt that and just say, oh yeah, it's easy, we'll do this, this, and this without a proper consideration and community support for doing that. Cool. And uh, it tells me I don't have permission to edit a function. What yep. is the permission system like? So, um, there are... It's complicated. Um, so, in like right now, obviously, you can't actually embed functions inside Wikitext articles, but that will change soon. You can already... Um, call those functions from an, the API and embed those in gadgets or tools, like Lucas has done with Wikidata's Lexeme forms, which is brilliant. Um, but what that means is that once a function is approved by the community, is live, you potentially have quite a lot of users out there who are using it. And so if you just go, you know what, actually, I think the world is better when 2 plus 2 does equal 5, and you just change the function, you can break thousands of pages very rapidly. And so we want it to be a pretty serious thing that you know community members don't just rush into but change quickly so there are separate rights for creating a function approving a function connecting tests to a function connecting fu uh, implementations to a function um disconnecting things from a function that already has running code and so on and so forth right and um very broadly it splits into the buckets of regular user who can create functions but can't make them approved functioners who can approve them and maintainers and stuff who can like do almost anything including changing the definition of true and false which is a really bad idea in a live running system but like it's there just in case uh so it's complicated but we're trying to simplify it without simplifying it so much that people accidentally break production uh, 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, a, a numerology in which four is actually missing and it goes one, two, three, five, sure. Like, we're not... We don't care. Uh, if that's what the community wants to build, then that's it. I think we're now at time, and so we should stop. But this has been really, really fun for me. I hope it's not been totally boring for all of you. And I've found so many bugs that I now need to go away and fix, or at least change, so you don't spot them the next time round. But thank you very much, and particularly thank you to Nicholas. <laughs>